my client series. Today for this video, we're gonna be doing a lace frontal sewing. And to get started, I went straight into bleaching the knots. I use quick blue. I use a scoop and a half of this, technically two scoops in total, but we're gonna do a scoop and a half for now. And then I went straight into using the 30 developer and I poured two small cups of this. You can see it's slightly runny and that's not what we're looking for. So go ahead and add the rest of that second scoop into this to make it a little bit more thicker. It should be like the consistency of toothpaste. Next, I went straight into applying it to the lace frontal. I did use a butter, a butter knife, which I use only for this, and I just kind of scraped it onto it. This is one way to do it, but because the front of the frontal is so important to me, I use a toothbrush to kind of press it a little bit down in there. Not too much, but enough to that it activates the knots on the lace frontal. Then I turn it over onto the foil because the foil helps the process to go a little bit faster. And I kept this on for a total of 15 minutes, no longer than that. Next, it was time for me to wash this off. When you're washing this off, guys, it's really important that you get all this product off because it will have the disgusting feeling of the residue left on it. So use shampoo, shampoo about twice, and then condition once. Next, I went straight into plucking it. Didn't really show this much on camera because this is not really the focus of the video. And I have several videos of me showing how I pluck. So I just showed you guys a little bit so you guys can know that it did not come all the way pre-plucked and that I went ahead and put my own spin on it. After that, it was time to go ahead and cornrow her hair. This is my cousin Geneva. We just did it, went ahead and did straight back braids. So for when you're doing a lace frontal sewing, it's pretty much the same as you doing a lace frontal wig. The only difference is you're actually sewing on the traps individually rather than having an entire unit on your head. So go ahead and make sure your part is directly in the middle because we will be doing a middle part. And from there, braid each braid properly spaced out so that they are not super huge or just chunky because if they're chunky your lace fronts will not lay flat all right so what i'm going to do right now for the end of her um braids that it lays nice and flat. I try to avoid pulling it up like this because then you'll have like the little bump right here. So for me, it's easier if I take one braid at a time and I just kind of hold it down and then twist it to come up here. So hold and then twist. And then it gives you a flatter um, bottom part right here. So you guys have been asking me to do this, do an updated video for you guys. I do have a video where I did this whole entire process already on myself, but I wanted to show you guys a little bit more of an updated version. Do I do this as often? No, I kind of don't because I've been into the wig thing really. So if you are a person that likes to still sew your hair down and, and you know still have sew-ins, this video is like extremely important for you. Okay, so for the middle part, we have a larger gap in between her braids. So you can go ahead and fold these up at the same time instead of having to do one, do each one individually. And then this one's just gonna go straight up here. So this was the end result of the braiding pattern. Very easy and simple. You don't have to do your braids this tiny, but if you do like your braids to be nice and tiny, then go ahead and do as much. This is how the frontal looks after it's been plucked. And I'm gonna go ahead and measure her hairline. And this is important so that it sits perfectly on your head and that when you're sewing it down, you sew it down properly. So I start off with the tip of the metal part right there. And then I hold it along her hairline, the edge of her hairline. You can see she's a full 12 inches. So what I like to do is since her hairline is 12 inches minus 
one inch okay because a lace frontal stretches so if your hairline is 12 or if you want to go ahead and minus one so cut it to be 11 inches So now it's time to sew it down. That last braid is very important because you're gonna go ahead and make a part and sew the lace frontal onto that braid. So fill for the braid, part it, and then start sewing where you fill the braid underneath. When you're doing this, make extremely neat stitching, okay? You want the, late, the stitching to look almost invisible. You don't want it to be bulky. You don't want it to look a hot mess. You wanna do this part really neat because it's in the front you know people can actually see it if i mean they can't see it but you want it to look as nice as possible and as neat as possible if you're doing this on on someone else have them hold it so that you're not pulling it back as you're sewing Next, I went ahead and I braided the frontal just to get the hair out the way because guys, this will get really messy and will be in the way. So either put it in a ponytail or braid it to get it out the way while you're sewing the lace frontal to the braids. Now it's time to sew down the lace frontal. So go ahead and stitch through the braid and through the edge of the lace front. That is gonna be important because that's just holding it down. And when you're doing it, kind of do about three to four stitches per braid. That's what I'm doing before I move to the next one. And as I'm doing this, I do have the client holding the frontal on the other side, which is kind of helping me to hold it and to keep it in place because you don't want this to slide back as you're sewing. That can happen, and then you'll have to probably cut it off and start all over again. So have them hold it so that it stays in place. And as you're sewing up, put a little bit of tension on it, kind of slightly pulling up so that it um, is sewn down as flat as possible. So now it's time to do what we did for the other side. Now it's time to stitch down the other side of the lace frontal. So go ahead and fill for the braid and make that part. And then you're just gonna go ahead and just sew neatly on that braid. As you can see, I am pulling it down a little bit more so that it's as tight as possible. When your hair grows, the lace frontal is going to slide back. That is just normal, it is what it is. That's why you have to go back and get maintenance to get it tightened or tighten it yourself. So you wanna have it as nice and fitted on your, he your head as possible. <laughs> that allows for it to last a little bit longer. Now don't pull too tight, because it will be uncomfortable and give you a headache, but pull enough where it's not sitting loose on your head. Okay, so you can see this is how it looks. It looks great, looks good. Now we're gonna move on to going on the net. She wanted a net. Um, for me, I don't really care to use a net like when I'm doing my own hair because I just need easy access to me itching my scalp. But some people like it. It does allow for their hair to last a little bit longer. It does um, sometimes help people with itching or taking the stress off of sewing onto your braids. So it has a lot of uses. This one is a stretchy one. This is all I had in my apartment, so I ended up using this one, which worked really well, so. So now it's time to sew the bundle. So I'm going to actually double each weft because it's just easier, it makes the hair nice and thick immediately. So I'm gonna put the needle through the track and through the braid and go ahead and knot that a couple of times before moving on to just stitching it with the loop. Now the benefit of doing a lace frontal is you don't actually have to have 
so many bundles on your hair. Like we wanted to fit in a full three and we only were able to fit in like two and a half or a little less than two and a half. So that's the benefit because you don't want it to be too heavy on your head. You don't want it to be too full. I mean, you want it to be full, but not heavy where it just feels uncomfortable. So I only put in as much as the space will allow me to put in because I am all about comfort. I always tell you guys that. This is the last part I'm gonna show you guys before I speed the rest up when we get to the top. But when I get to the end of each weft until I get to the frontal, I'm gonna actually fold each weft, okay? Because at this part, you can go ahead and do that. When you get up to the lining of the lace frontal, you do not wanna fold your wefts because it will not lay flat and it will be a little bit bumpy between where the lace frontal meets and where the end of the track is folded. So keep that in mind. So as I get towards the top part and the lining of the lace front, when you get to the end right here, so when you're getting to the lace and you come to a point where you, where you need to kind of end the track, you want to make sure the track is as flat as possible and lines up with the end of the lace front. So take your, take your weft, and you're going to put your needle right through it. And then I like to either get as close as possible or get a little bit on the edge of that part of the lace frontal. Okay, so you can see right here, a little bit on. Go ahead and secure it by knotting it a couple of times. Now we're just gonna continue going around like we were normally. Exactly, so do not fold the wefts when you get to the lining of the lace frontal. Now we are finished with the bundles, finished sewing. The hair it is a natural curly look. Um, I think it's a loose wave, not completely sure. But we are gonna go ahead and straighten it because that was her choice and her preference. up a little bit and I'm gonna show you guys another little trick that I usually do um, so to avoid the lace frontal sliding back throughout the next couple of weeks your client has the lace frontal wig you can either use a brown thread a tonal thread I want to say or a black thread or clear thread and I just make a part where I know they won't really part their hair and I'll just fill for a braid and then I'll sew the lace frontal to that braid this helps it to stay up without shifting back. It allows it to last a little bit longer. But I know for a fact that her hair will not be parted where I put the thing, where I put the thread at. And I did this also on the other side of her head. So ask your client, will they be parting their hair hair or whatever? So you can know it does not interfere with styling. So if they wanted to do a half a path down, they still could. So now it's time to actually cut the lace. Um, I wasn't crazy about the color of this lace. I feel like the lace was a little bit lighter and it probably could have been toned. gotta be glued um and just press this down into her scalp i would probably use glue next time for this because i think gotta be glued is just a weird product sometimes i it works when it wants to work <laughs> And 
then I went ahead and untied it and I'm using some foundation for the part just to brighten it up a little bit and I'm gonna try to go ahead and flat iron some more to make it as straight as possible. Like I said, it was very hard to get this hair straight. It got straight, but then it wouldn't stay straight. So if you are interested in this hair, just know that um, you might need to put a lot of heat on this, like a lot of heat for this to really stay as straight as possible. But it did get straight, which is good. And then this was our end result. She loved it. And I'm just gonna do some little fixing up and touch ups and all kinds of stuff. I really enjoyed this video. Um, I am gonna try to do two to three client series per week. So this one is the first one of the week, hence it's Friday. But yeah, so I have some more planned for you guys. Stay tuned and thanks for watching this video. Thank you.